people that settle in Tombstone and stay, like me, are different from other people. When I first started staying here, I was scared. When we leave this realm, what else is out there? We fear what we don't know. That kind of accelerates itself. Fear builds on fear and uh, that can cause lots of problems. It's a, it's a cutthroat place. You, if, you, if you don't know what you're talking about, it make you look foolish. Well, Tombstone would never have been here if it hadn't been for a silver strike. And they took something like $41 million out of these hills and on these streets. That doesn't seem like a lot of money. But if you take that now, they, that runs into the billions if you compare it to what income now. And in fact, many historians believe that this was the richest silver strike in the history of the Southwest. Tombstone today is actually, it's a tourist town. Everybody likes the Old West, they come out here to. To, to investigate, see the Old West. Uh, mostly what goes on here is the reenactments, uh, people pretending that they're back in the day, and people in, coming to watch them, and then uh, mostly partying. We do a lot of drinking in Tombstone. Rolling Rocks are a $2 special. It's a fun town, there's a lot of nice people. Mikey drinks beer, I do the gunfight shows, drink beer, we hang out, have a lot of fun. Well, I got vodka in my back pocket. More often than not, when you get to know the people that have chosen to actually move here and dress, live here and dress up and be part of these gunfight shows, they have a very strong sense of being home. The town folk of Tombstone, once I, once I came here, they basically, they became my family. It's like one big giant family out here. We're living the dream right now. You know, how many other places can you go where you can walk around with a 45 on your hip all day long and uh, nobody can say anything to you or do anything about it? When you get away from the business district, you find more and more structures that are original. And the Beaufort House is certainly one of those. It's evolved over the years into many different configurations. It's been a bed and a breakfast. It's been a private residence. Many believe that it's psychically active. buy this house because it was haunted. We bought it because it was a historic tombstone house. We didn't even know it was haunted when we bought it. When I tell people that we own a haunted house and tombstone, a lot of them are very surprised, but most of them are very intrigued and they start asking a lot of questions. Well, for us, I think it was just we were drawn to the house. Um, we drove by it. Um, when it was up for sale, actually. And um, I don't even think we had heard the stories or anything. We didn't know really the legend, at least I didn't. I was um, somewhat of a legend because I lived here for so long. One story here in the Buford house is the, the, of the people who built the house, the Bufords, lost three of their children in the house. And, uh, and it's sad because you know, back in the 1880s, children died of just about anything. One night I felt like I felt something touching the back of my leg and it felt very real. I flipped over expecting to see a person standing there and there was nobody there. And of course I tried to explain it away, you know, thinking oh, I was half asleep. But I have to say it felt very real and uh, then I read about stories of women staying here experiencing having the neck, back of their necks rubbed and things like that, so I don't know. And then uh, there's a story about a man named George Daves who either was staying in the house, maybe living here part-time, and he fell in love with this 
girl who lived across the street named Petra. And he took her to a party one night shortly after he got back. Well, she elected to spurn him at the party and go out and let some other guy take her home. Well, it made him pretty angry because he'd done all this work, you know, overtime and everything, getting all this set up to get married. And then she acted that way. And one day when she was out in the street, he went out and shot her three or four times, depending on which story you read in the old papers. Fortunately, he didn't kill her, but he thought he did. So he, and then he committed suicide and shot himself. But he put it here so he didn't miss his, his shot. Now this, is, this was one of the most violent towns in the West. For a long time, it was lawless. There was no law here at all. So it was pretty much everything goes. And this led to a lot of violence here in Tombstone. Uh, you know, one of the big sayings of Tombstone is the streets of Tombstone had a man for breakfast every morning. The town was so brutal and violent during the time period that it was just natural for somebody to get shot on a daily basis. And that kind of violence in the paranormal world, it, it, it creates this energy and the energy, that kind of energy stays in the area. Now, I have a hard time with that because I don't believe in ghosts, see? And uh, it, it's hard for me to take anything like that serious. I've never seen one, I've never touched one, and one has never contacted me, so <laughs> I feel left out. Um, I've felt them, I've seen them, we've talked to them. There are people that live in this town who I know and I respect, who have had the most awesome experiences with various forms of psychic energy. Uh, I, think one, I think the answer to your question of why there's so many ghosts in Tombstone would be that Tombstone lasted longer than a lot of the ghost towns. A lot of the towns that are haunted may have existed for six months, you know, and then the mind played out and they moved on. And the fact that it's, it's been here for so long, it's had a chance to have more death and destruction, and hence there are more spirits here. There, there's been different paranormal sightings all over town. Uh, my wife and them, they did the paranormal investigation down at the old Watt and Tarbell Undertaker's building. I've had experiences inside the Birdcage Theater. One day when I was here, broad daylight, I actually saw Virgil Earp's ghost standing in front of the Crystal Palace. Um, the only thing that I've experienced myself is I've taken pictures and seen lots of orbs show up in the pictures here at work and out where I live and I have friends who have experienced things. When I first started investigating the paranormal in 2002, I was very much a skeptic. Capital S, underlined, bold, italic, skeptic. I figured there was a logical explanation for all the ghost stories people tell. I figured there was uh, a, a concrete, logical reason for all these tall tales. But as I did the work, as I read, I researched, I got mentored, the more you do it, I akin it to a door opening up. And you see a little past the door every time you do it. And every time you do the work, the door opens more and more until finally you see what's on the other side. And once that happens, you can't go back to that earlier stage. You've seen it, you know it, you're aware. I had my first experience when I was about five or six at my aunt and uncle's house. I um, was out in their barn with my cousin and there was a man out there. I just started talking to him. I could see him. Um, she could not see him, but he was very real, very normal, looked as real as you and I, and he kind of explained to me that not everybody can see him, um, that I was a special child. You know, I've always been in interested in psychic phenomena, and as a casual observer, I started hanging around psychic bookstores, and one day I saw a woman working the, the pendulum, and I said, well, I can do that. And I, I picked up the pendulum, and uh, I'm a self-taught pendulum dowser now. Okay, George, is your last name Buford? Hey, big yes. Uh, Mr. Buford, uh, were you, uh, did you die in this house? Yeah, that's, that, that's a strong yes. Okay. And for the paranormal, there is a truth out there. We're still just trying to convert it. We're still trying to... Um, demystify it so that it's normal. And it's kind of one of those things where you want to get more and that was like, oh yeah, that's cool, I want to do it again. So I started going to places and talking to people and it just kind of led and led and led. And the more I did and the more I researched and the more I found out, the more I wanted to know. And you know, I started out 32 years ago with probably five questions 
here I am 32 years later with none of those answered and probably 40 more. like a bird cage or it's like an engine dying out on burn rage and you can blow out all the candles and fire up the limelight she looks thrown with the cold canary gaslight 